So not just the signal power, which is in the numerator, but also the interference and the noise are a key part of the signal interference plus noise ratio. In our case, the interference is the total power from all of the beams that we have formed with this beam forming to the other devices. So in the previous animation, we showed the beams to our intended device. At the same time, we calculated the beams to all of the other 16 devices in the scene. And for each case, if we have a device such as this second device here with the pink beam, and the first device is caught in that beam, that becomes interference to this device. And so our signal divided by the interference is the ratio of this intended beam in green to the interference in red. In addition to interference, we used RF background noise based on some literature, and we assumed approximately a negative 87 dBm of noise based on an assumed 100 megahertz bandwidth and ambient noise levels that have been measured in some of the literature at these frequencies. So we look first at the received power along the route. We see the maximum ratio transmission in blue and the, MR, or the uh, zero forcing technique in red. And we can see that over most of the route, maximum ratio transmission has delivered more power to our intended device other than the areas directly right in front of the array. Overall, this was about a 13 dB improvement or 14 dB improvement over the zero forcing technique. When we look at the signal to interference plus noise ratio, however, we see a very different picture. Again, we have the maximum ratio transmission in blue and we have zero forcing in red. The zero level, when the intended beam and the interference are equal to each other, is shown right along the line here. And we can see that for the maximum ratio transmission, even though it had higher power, there were many places where its signal to noise level actually dropped below zero. And this was due to the fact that it was interfering. The beams to the other devices, other devices ended up interfering in many cases more than the power of the intended signal. Maximum ratio transmission has this issue, but zero forcing on the other hand was able to minimize the interference. And we see a signal to interference plus noise ratio here of 30 to 50 dB, and then eventually dropping down to about 10 dB until the device went around the corner, and at that point the zero forcing dropped very rapidly in its signal interference plus noise. So for this beamforming comparison, the bottom line is that the received power from MRT was about 14 dB higher than zero forcing, but because of the interference from the other beams and the fact that the interference was minimized by zero forcing, the zero forcing was able to deliver an average of about 20 dB, 25 dB higher signal to interference plus noise than MRT.